Good morning, everyone. Please find your samastiti. And uh, we're going to be working with the chair today, if you have that. Um, possibly the blocks, depending on your individual needs. Well, this class is about waking up. If you're in a different time zone, it will give you a little energy for the evening. It's actually a nice thing to do just before dinner, too. So just find your feet, feel the bottoms of your feet, bend your knees, focusing on legs and feet today. And I'm just going to make sure you're all muted. Good. Okay, I'm just going to mute one of you there. All right, we're good. We're ready to roll. Feeling the bottoms of your feet. Inhale, bringing your arms up. Exhale through the center as we own. Bending the knees as you do this. Inhale, stretching up to the sky, radiating like the sun. And exhale. going your own timing. Just noticing your body, your breath, your mind. Two more times. at the heart just make an intention this morning or this evening for your day for your practice maybe linked to a theme of grounding letting go of connecting to our legs and feet When we enter the present moment, the prana or the energy just flows without any effort. It's really practicing being present, abhyasa. When you're practicing and you have a thought that arises, just say now or some other word that brings you back into the present. When you're ready, bringing your feet together, if that's comfortable, you can also have a block between your legs, feet hip width apart. And as you bend your knees, the knees tracking approximately over the second toes and adjusting your feet accordingly so that you have that alignment in your knees. Inhale, arms coming up. Coming up onto the toes, if that works for you. Stretching way up. And exhale, hands down by your sides. If you're having trouble with balance this morning, feel free to hold on to a wall. And you can hold on to a chair or a wall and use one arm at a time and then switch sides. 
Picking any of those variations that work for you. You could also tie your ankles together with a belt. That can help if one foot is very different than the other. And just lengthening the breath. Adding some ujjayi pranayama constricting the throat. Pausing between inhale and exhale. Bring your own timing. Don't do it with me, do your own timing. According to the length of your breath. And there comes the sun. Take a break. We're going to do another round of this. This time, if it's comfortable, you're going to add me awesome. So just a reminder about that. So I'll just show this camera. So inhale, thumb going up the finger. Exhale, finger going down the thumb and flick. Thumb going up the middle finger. Finger going down the thumb and flick. Thumb going up the ring finger. Finger going down the thumb and flick. Thumb going up the little finger, little finger going down the thumb and flick. Adding that to the inhale and exhale. If this is all too much, you can just touch the uh, tips of your fingers or any of the joints. So let's try that. Inhale, thumb going up the index finger, pressing as hard as you can as you come up. And exhale, index finger, pressing down thumb. And flick, middle finger. Thumb going up the middle finger. And middle finger going down the thumb. Flick, thumb going up the index, sorry, the ring finger. And ring finger going down the thumb. Flick. I'm going up the little finger last time. And little finger going down the thumb. And to the heart. Take a rest, observe the natural breath. And if it's comfortable, bring one hand to the belly, the other the heart. And just notice how these two parts of your body move as you breathe without any effort. If you want to add a mantra, inhale, let, exhale, go, inhale, om, 
Exhale, Namo, I surrender, I surrender to this moment. I let go of my thoughts, my worries. Going back to the legs and feet. When you're ready, we're going to bring one foot forward, starting with the left, if that's comfortable, the right foot back. We're going to um, see if it's possible to make the feet parallel. And I've got So inhale here and exhale, bend the back knee. See how that feels. Inhale and exhale, bend. Getting into the foot, the ankle, the calf. Just preparing for Parshva Uttanasana. You do this many ways. Could be, could have your hands on the wall back of the chair, your hands could be on the floor. And then if it's comfortable, come into the pose as you exhale and then inhale up. Exhale down. Inhale up, just showing this with the chair. Again, you could make it harder if you like. And that back foot, can you keep it parallel to the front? This is also warming up the back. Some of you have got back pain today. We've got some wrist stuff going on. So just adjusting this to who's in the class today. We're going to switch sides after doing that four to six times, according to your breath pattern. Do it in your own timing. We're going to start with just the back leg. Exhale, bend the back knee and inhale, extend. Just see if you can feel that back calf, maybe into the sole of the foot. If you've got any plantar fasciitis, you might be feeling this. And if you have a tight calf, you'll definitely be feeling this. Exhale, bending that back knee. My front leg is straight. And inhale, straighten. And when you're ready after doing that six to eight times likely, we did that quite a bit, just see if you can go more into the pose and keep both legs straight. Inhale up with your back and exhale, extend forward, drawing the belly in from the pelvic floor up. You could have your hands on the floor, on blocks beside the foot. You could also just be holding on to the wall. Or a table, countertop. Start focusing on the breath. Inhale, expanding. Exhale, contracting, pelvic floor up. And after doing this, 
four to six times, maybe staying in the pose. You could take your hands down. Now coming up, exhale, switching to a downward facing dog using the chair. With this, for those of you who have some wrist and arm stuff going on, you just keep it moving back and forth. All of us could decide that's better for us, just moving back and forth, not putting pressure on the wrists. You can bend the knees as you come back as well. After doing that four to six times, you might decide to stay and just stretch. Might step further back. You could go into the full pose, downward facing dog, if you like as well. And if you'd like, you can add some movement for the upper back, neck, and shoulders. We have quite a bit of that in the room today. So just adding a little bit of upper back, neck, and shoulders, arms, and hands today for what's in the room. And if you've got a strained lower back, this might be helpful, giving you a little bit of traction as you go back, you can imagine someone drawing your hips back, drawing the belly in, tightness under the armpits, this also can feel really good. Maybe staying. one shoulder that's a little higher than the other, try bringing one hand forward a little bit. Just see if you can even that out. For those of you with scoliosis, and when you're ready, coming forward, and the knees, inhale, halfway up, exhale, stay, inhale, all the way up, and find your samastiti, Notice how you feel. Hopefully a little bit more grounded, a little bit more present. Notice the bottoms of your feet. Exhale, bend your knees. Feel the bottoms of your feet. Inhale, straighten. Hopefully you're starting to find some of that apana vayu, that downward flow of energy. Feel a bit of heaviness in the legs and the feet. Those of you with knee issues, just this bending and straightening of the legs can be helpful. You can add on now pulling up on the thighs as you straighten the legs and maybe even lift the toes. To play with that and then exhale release. You can add neck and shoulders to a bit more weight. And whole body, inhale, pulling up on those kneecaps perhaps, maybe lifting the toes, maybe opening the chest, exhale. Bend the knees, knees tracking over second toes, looking down, feeling the bottoms of the feet. And anytime you have a thought entering your mind, Outside of your practice, just say to yourself now, some other word to bring you back into the present. And just finishing up. 
Okay, so we're going to move into some balances now. More balances, little legs and feet. So feet together if it's comfortable. You're going to inhale, bring the arms up in front of you. And exhale, bring one leg up and just start with a bent knee as you bring your hands down. So I'm mirroring you to show left side first. Inhale, extending. Full Tadasana and exhale. Let's bring that leg up, really standing on the opposite foot. If this is feeling easy for you, you can try with a full, ex fully extended leg as you point the toes. See how high you can go this morning. When you come back, try to keep balancing on that one leg as long as possible before you transfer to both. And try not to lean back or forward as you bring the leg up. Slowing it down, focusing on the breath. Exhale, pelvic floor all the way up. Inhale if you can, chest to belly. Do four to six rounds, depending on your breath. And just finishing up, let's do one more. And samastiti, even standing pose. I'm taking it to the side. So this is also working with the hips, stabilizing the hips. Inhale, arms coming up. Palms together. Exhale, bring one leg to the side. As so you bring your hands down. Inhale, coming up. So for this one, I'm not leaning to the side at all. I'm trying to keep my back straight up. And just do this in your own timing again. Pausing between inhale and exhale. So again, when you're coming to the side with the leg, try to keep your torso straight. Don't lean to the side. That's right, that's better. Yeah, keep straight up. Again, doing four to six rounds. Let's go into our last round here. Same thing, try to transfer very last moment. So you're really pulling up on that standing leg. And then go into your samastiti. Just rest for a moment. Now we're gonna go behind. You can use the chair for this one in one of the variations I'm gonna show. Inhale, arms coming up. You can also use a wall behind you. Play with that. Inhale, arms coming up in the front. Exhale, hands coming down by your hips and just swinging back. So we're just going to start with that. So you might just come to here if balance is an issue, or you might be able to tip forward. You could grab that chair or your wall if you like for a little bit more support if you need it. Inhale, flexing the foot coming up and again, transferring last moment. If 
Try to keep your hips nice and even. So this is working on balance, strengthening the legs, the hips, and the core. And keep this going for six times. And you can add on if you like by having your hands in front in more of a warrior two. You could extend back to that wall if you've got one. You could have your hands on the seat of the chair to help you stabilize the hips. So you can play with some of those variations. And just finishing up your last round. And find your samastiti. See how you feel. Let the breath slow down. Uttanasana, feet apart or together, your choice. You can use the chair or not. Inhale, arms coming up to the sides or the front. And exhale, forward bend. Again, you can come halfway down to the chair if you prefer. Inhale, move the arms first and line with the ears and come up. Exhale, Samastiti. You want to make this easier, bring the arms side rather than in front. In front, it's a lot of weight, a lot of core strength, a lot of back strength. So bring the arms side instead. Bend the knees as well to take load off the back. Especially when you're coming up, the arms in front is quite a bit of weight, so just be careful. You've got some back issues. You can remove the arms altogether. So I'm going to show some of the variations. So you can bring arms side. Just keep this going your own timing. And you can have arms just moving down the legs. Just sweeping down the legs. Removing the weight of the arms from the pose, which makes it easier. Or of course, you can use a chair or a wall. Pick your medicine. It's going to be our last one. We're now going to stay in the pose. Again, pick your medicine. You might want to use blocks here. Any height. Try some stitchy. Inhale, extend the spine nice and long. Exhale, forward fold. Try to keep the rib cage coming forward so you're really lengthening the lower back. You can actually feel that if you draw your, the bottom of your rib cage and draw them up, you can actually feel your lower back getting a bit longer. 
play with that. Inhale, extend nice and long. Exhale, forward bend. So for those of you with some lower back tightness, you might wanna add that bend of the knees to give more extension still to the lower back as you come forward. Those of you ready, you can stay in the pose, feet apart or together. Hands can be beside your feet. I'd like to loop mine back. Inhale, let, exhale, go. Just go into breath awareness now. Inhale, om, exhale, namo. When you're ready, slowly come up, come halfway up. Inhale. Exhale, stay. Inhale, all the way up. Exhale, release to your samastiti. Notice how you feel in your legs your feet, in your body, in your breath, in your mind. A little bit more grounding, a little bit more relaxation. All right, we're going to move into some Ukatasana. We can do this with our chair first, and then some of you will do some other variations. So you're going to inhale, bring your arms up in front, and as you exhale, just be mindful. Make sure you look back and feel that chair. And make sure you're going to sit on it and not fall over. Just sit down, just find that spot, and then we're going to try this up and down. So as you come down, try to see if you can play with, maybe you just hover off the seat of the chair or maybe you sit right down. So you decide if you wanna go right to sitting down or if you just wanna hover. This pose is very strengthening for the legs, for the feet. Great for the hips as well. Pelvic stability. That's feeling pretty easy. You can move to the next step. So you can go to a wall. Your feet away from the wall, and you're going to inhale, bring your arms up, and exhale. You're going to sit down and slide down the wall, your hands by your sides, Ardha Ukatasana, and inhale, sliding up. So, this should be a little harder than using the chair. It's also very strengthening for the knees, for the muscles around the knees. Let's see the knee 
issues. If this is feeling pretty easy, try staying in the pose and inhale, bring the arms up and exhale down. This is the hardest version. Your legs may be shaking. Take a break if you need to. And after four to six times, just coming up and release. And notice how you feel. Let's give those legs a stretch. Inhale, arms coming up. This time we're going to extend our um, Uttanasana, we're going to interlock the fingers if we can, and we're going to come forward. Now, you might come just halfway down, Arda Uttanasana. I'm rounding my spine now, and then inhale, extending and lengthening and coming up. So we'll just start with this variation. Exhale, rounding the spine, coming halfway down. I'm bending my knees a bit. Inhale, extending into a back arch coming up. This also can be very nice for the lower back. If this is too much, just hold the seat of the chair instead. So you can just do something like this to remove some of the weight of the arms. Still quite a bit of work on the lower back, so be careful. Just checking you guys out, making sure you're okay. And just finishing up and notice if you feel your lower back, having done that, it's quite a bit of work. Now we're gonna go the other direction. So inhale, arms coming up, interlocking the fingers if you can, palms to the sky, exhale, forward bend, Inhale, come halfway up. Arda Uttanasana, half forward bend. Exhale, forward bend. Again, you can do this using a chair by doing the first version we did, just up and down from standing to halfway down. You can remove the arms to make it easier as well. Slide the arms up, inhale, arching the spine, exhale, forward bend, bend the knees. This again makes it easier. Or arms at the sides even, try that. That's a little harder than with no arms. If you're finding this too easy, you can stay in the pose. I like to exhale, bend as I stay, and then inhale, extend, and exhale down. Stay in a breath or two, your choice. So really working those lower back muscles and core muscles, as well as your legs. And when you feel you've had enough, to stay in your four bend of your choice. Chair, wall, full pose. Inhale, let, exhale, go. Inhale, om, exhale, namo. And gradually coming up, inhale. Halfway, bend the knees, exhale, stay. 
no weight of arms. Inhale, coming up. Exhale, find your samastiti, even standing. Notice how you feel. Notice your legs and feet. Notice your breath. A little more grounded now, perhaps. Perhaps the breath is a little longer and smoother. Virga and Sukshma, long and subtle breath. And perhaps the thoughts have slowed down. There's more space. There's more silence. And on that note, we're going to hit the deck. So I'm going to move my chair. So just lying down, you can certainly use a mat if you like, a yoga mat. I'm not going to. And we're just going to finish up today on the floor. So we're going to start with some Tadaka Mudra. And for this version, prepping this in my practice yesterday, with this one out of the tickle trunk. I think you guys can see me okay. Those of you who know what a tickle trunk is, you must be a Canadian <laughs> of a certain age. <laughs> okay, so I've got these blocks underneath my thighs. If you've got a knee issue, instability in the knee, please put them under the knees for more stability. Um, you can use a blanket, you could use a rolled mat. These are my favorite way to do it. You can use books. Krishmacharya used books. My theory is Mr. Anger took books and made these beautiful blocks. They kind of look like books. Okay, so you can use just one if you only have one as well. Or a pillow. I've done this with a pillow very often in India. Exhale, bend your ankles, your toes towards your nose and pull up on the thighs. This one's for the knees. Inhale, point the toes. The pose we're working with is Tadaka Mudra. Inhale, arms overhead as you point those toes. And I'm doing Jalandara Bandha, the chin lock. Chin down towards the throat. Exhale, release that as you pull up on the thighs and bring your toes towards your nose. Keep that going. I'm just remembering another variation of this. I think one of you in particular is going to like this. If you've got one foot that's very different than the other, first created this for a soccer player I worked with. You can put these um, a belt on your toes. Keep your feet hip width apart, and you press out into the belt. And keep your feet parallel. And this gets into the hips a lot too. So you can try that. This makes it very much harder. I've also been known to put uh, one of these hard blocks between my feet. I'm not going to do that today, but you can try that. You can strap the whole thing in. And I remember doing this with the volleyball team at Kaplan University, and they told me it was the hardest pre-game workout they'd ever had. And we were just doing stuff like this. It's pretty funny. So it is quite a bit of challenge. And release. So we're just going to end with a little Upanasana, Urdhva, Prasrita Padasana, and then a very short Shavasana today. It's just an hour class. So we're just going to have a rest at the end. 
it's morning, so sometimes better not to have a full Shavasana in the morning. Exhale, knees to chest, Apanasana. And inhale, legs up. If your lower back is feeling sensitive to this, some of you have some lower back stuff going on, you can put a block or a pillow underneath the sacrum, no higher than the waist. Just see if that helps release your lower back a bit more. And if this is feeling too easy for you, you can play with the angle of the legs. You can touch those toes down before you draw them in to Apanasana, or to Prasritapadasana, you can do with your legs out on an angle. Exhale, touch the toes down and draw them in. So this is much harder. Pick your medicine according to how you want to work this morning. Make it easier, make it harder. Moving from Sukham to stiram, from ease to strength. And just finishing up your version of the pose in full panasana if it's comfortable, holding on to the legs. You can hold underneath if you've got knee issues. Put your hands between the knees and the thighs. Just do short rest. Inhale, Om. Exhale, Namo. Inhale, let, exhale, go. You can stay there longer if you like. If you have time to extend your Shavasana, feel free to just keep lying there. If you're ready to close, just start making your way to a seated position. I always get that option in this class. If you want to stay a little longer, feel free. Shanti together. Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Shanti, 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 Hari Ki Oh. 
Namaste. Namaskaram. Thank you very much.